Hello, Awakened Beauties. Finally, it's here, the truth, to empower women to true inner beauty through healthy biology. And now, here is your hostess, Cassandra Keel, your organic beauty and CBD mentor, helping you stay sane, get sleep, and bring your sexy back. Sponsored by EvokeBeauty.com. Welcome to the Awaken Beauty Podcast. I am Cassandra, your organic beauty, positive mind management, and endocannabinoid mentor. And today is another mini episode. And today we're talking about hair care, natural hair care, healing damaged hair with this, not that, natural alternative ingredients for both instant gratification and lasting effects. Now, as a salon owner and a product formulator, I can absolutely feel your frustration that when you've tried to turn to a natural product, it hasn't always bared out as you had hoped it would. So if your hair has a mind of its own and you urgently need some hair repair, resist the urge to stock up with either the same thing you've always been doing or those chemical-laden synthetic shampoos, conditioners, masks, sprays, and anything else touting miraculous hair repair technology. It as simple as this, dear one, great hair is healthy hair. It's that simple. So let's unstress your tresses from chemical duresses and bless them with bioactive botanicals And we cannot forget the inside-out approach to a healthy hair diet. So as noted, as a formulator and hairstylist, I understand. I understand the dilemma to product overwhelm, especially in professional salon products that tout their natural and organic on the label, only to find when you flip it around, it has far too many ingredients and far too many synthetic ingredients at that let alone you're looking at natural fragrance, but we all know that's often, or if you don't know, that's often how they hide a fragrance that is synthetic. So unfortunately, gone unattended, and for too long, these different substances strip our hair of their natural oils. They leave our scalp leaving both dry and also can leave a heavy, waxy buildup, guaranteeing you a bad hair day any day. So the more damaged the hair is, the higher its negative atomic charge. And the more soft it is and the more smoothing and shine, increased ingredients that are synthetic in another product are basically drawn to these negative charges. So if there's a lot of damage, you might see a lot of buildup on the hair. So same thing is for hard water. If you have hard water, a lot of the times what I tell clients is it's in the pipes. So you put all of this salt into your water softener, you're taking a shower and you're still coming out with product buildup, brassy hair, and hair that is devitalized. So there's this play between negative and positive ions in the hard water and through the pipes or the water stripping out of the pipes and depositing on your hair. Mm -hmm. That's why I always tell my clients that actually your hair is actually more damaged from the water you put on it oftentimes than the products. So We want to keep that in check. So the more damaged the hair is, again, the higher the negative atomic charge and all of these synthetics and other things positively bind to and create detrimental hair health. So here's the deal, ladies. You can have a good hair day every day. And the first step is improving the products that you put on your hair. That safely and beautifully care for your hair with a corresponding active ingredients that do not harm your hair, your health, and frankly, the environment. So today's mini episode, as I said, we're going to explore in the game of use this, not that. So what we're going to do, and if you need to go ahead and rewind this, or if you want to just kind of think about the products that you have at home, um, you know, really get into the mindset of, you know, 
with Evoke Beauty, our hair product line, our skin line, our CBD products, you know, I really look to the energetics of the earth, the plant materials, the compounds that are biomimetic and work with our body and have this really incredible DNA that just raise the quality of our hair, our skin, and our spirit. So that's what we want to explore and be mindful of these different ingredients that are in your products at home or next time you go out shopping or land on the Evoke Beauty website. Um, but we want to make sure that we don't find a line that's just touting a couple natural ingredients. But then again, as already referenced at the beginning of the show, is filled with a bunch of other synthetics right around it. There's no use to putting battery acid into a bottle of water. So... The first piece is wanting that sudsing, bubbly feeling in our shampoos or our cleansers. So use this. It's really great for the hair and it doesn't over dry out the hair most of the time, depending on what else is in the product. But coconut proteins and herbal waters will give you all the luxurious lather that you want and leave your hair feeling fresh, feeling clean, and it does this through using saponifiers. So these are saponins that are derived from sugars, the proteins and fatty acids of organic virgin coconut oil. So we instill cocoa betaine, which is derived from coconut because it's an extremely mild and easily biodegradable cleanser derived from coconut oil. So that is one of the key actives when you're looking for a cleanser that for the most part, is a clean, nice, natural foaming agent that has those qualities that you want without stripping away your hair's natural oils, okay? So just remember, squeaky clean feeling means that your hair and your scalp is being stripped of its natural oils. And when you strip the hair of its natural oils, it leads to the overproduction of oils to compensate. So you may think that you have an oily scalp, but you may just be using really, really, really harsh cleansers or shampooing too often that these harsh deter detergents on the hair end up damaging the microbiome or what we call our scalp, leading to these conditions, and even dandruff. So to use and then to not use is not that, and that is sulfates. So I think we've all been around the natural world that we kind of understand the implication of sulfates. And we usually are using sodium lauryl sulfate, SLS, ammonium lauryl sulfate, ALS, and other surfactants to clean the hair for that rich lather that we look for. But they are 90% of a foaming product, and they're also a skin irritant, a hormone, an endocrine disruptor. And also, they're suspected as a, being a carcinogen with specific gene mutations. So we're just going to steer clear of that one. Next is going to be natural scents. And I'm going to say minus the migraine, ladies. I cannot be around perfume anymore, let alone a lot of these really, really strong scents and hair products. So, you know, sometimes the most expensive hair products have the most strong abrasive smells. And I feel as though a lot of people are so overwhelmed from these synthetic scents that it, the industry is really picking up into these natural scents and how much more soft and um, controllable they are when you're putting all these different products on during the day. It's really important for our health. So use this, and that would be essential oils. We also call them terpenes in the cannabis world. Uh, other objects are going to be, or I should say compounds, are going to be food grade extracts, which could be almond extract. And these are the purest aromatic molecules distilled from nature and plant compounds. Um, they also have a really beautiful energy to them, as I noted earlier, for the mind, body, and spirits. And one most must be really, really careful when you're DIYing with these oils at home because they can become very photosensitive. And photosensitivity usually comes from the sun 
or too high in toxic levels, which may burn your scalp or burn your skin, especially if you're using essential oils on babies. Uh, so you want to be really careful when you're using essential oils. To give you a frame of reference, when I'm formulating with essential oils, I put no more than 1% into a blend. And by no stretch of the mark do you go over 3%. You're just asking for skin sensitivities, etc. Now the other piece, and as a previous educator for Aveda, you know, a lot of people have agitations and allergens to Aveda or other companies that have essential oils. I have 100% respect for Aveda and, and how they really brought this industry up and rose the industry for many, many, many years. Uh, but whether it's a partially synthetic or a watered down essential oil, there's all different fragments of how essential oils can kind of fit into the matrix of a product, uh, leaving you agitated or with agitation. So for the scalp, what's really beautiful about essential oils is that they're oxygenators. They make oxygen more available to the tissue. So they really are a blessing to the, the skin and to the scalp. And they're also free radical scavengers, and they go after areas of oxidation. So essential oils are actually the highest known source of antioxidants available. So unlike other synthetic fragrances and toxins, these oils also do not bioaccumulate in the body and the fatty tissue where disease may then breed. And their frequency and the effect is just not naturally accumulative. So the effect can last up to five months and essential oils move at lightning speed. So they really are really an incredible attribute to many products. But again, it's making sure that you have a good detoxification system, you're not over diluting them and using them in sparingly. And what not to use, not that. Well, I've already kind of giving you an idea of fragrance, perfume. These synthetic substances is in, sometimes I feel like everything, of course, um, but it's there to make the product and your hair smell good. And the catch is the FDA regulations don't require manufacturers to state what exactly those substances labeled around quote unquote fragrances. Even botanical sounding fragrances like um, geranial and some of these others are actually made in laboratory. And so according to the FDA, these synthetic fragrances often can lead to headaches, dizziness, allergic reactions, skin discoloration, um, and even skin irritation. So getting that strength and body in your hair that you want, moving on, body comes from strength. It's only a natural inclination that your hair is going to have bounce. It's going to be full when it has a lot of resilience to it. And that's natural resilience. So what should we use? So here are some key ingredients that I typically um, have found that are the most impactful and are very, very light on the hair. Everything that we use at Evoke is made for weightless hair effect, professional advantage as far as results, as well as really, really dense and actives. So aloe vera is great because it protects and moisturizes the hair as an emollient and an antioxidant, but it also has a composition of over 18 different amino acids, vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals that impart this really beautiful moisture on the hair, but it also leaves it really, really smooth because of its polysaccharide and sterile content. Another piece is kelp extract, which is really, really rich in seaweed and iodine that helps prevent and treat dandruff. And then B vitamins are really nice. It's an emollient that instantly binds to the hair shaft. And what I love about B vitamins and B complexes is that it almost becomes like a swelling agent on the hair. So it gives that really, really nice strength, shine, and reduces the breakage and split ends. And the next are a complex of different proteins. Quinoa protein, is really, really wonderful because it's gluten-free, it's an amino acid, and it protects the hair and the follicle strength and 
gets that fullness and that softness while protecting against environmental damage. And then some soy protein is a great protein that becomes attracted to the hair cuticle and forms this really nice protective layer around the cuticle that helps soften and repair in addition to giving it that fullness, that shine, that really nice non-flyaway hair that we all look for. And not that, gluten. Gluten proteins, a lot of these different proteins are highly processed and they often can be tainted with different toxic chemicals. So also many people are, as we know, have grown sensitive to grain proteins resulting in a lot of itchy scalp that leaves it dry and brittle. So let's move on to getting that glow, getting that really beautiful shine. And this is a really tough one for aging hair, color hair, all of these different things from the chemicals that we put on our hair with hair color or products to just our environment and bad water really devitalize the cuticle and the hair. So getting that glow and shine can be a little bit challenging, and that's why I think products, for the most part, you just need them. And like I said, the hair just takes a beating from heat, environmental toxins, products. It just strips that what we call the natural moisturizing factor. It's abbreviated NMF, and it's absolutely critical to keeping that really, really nice, smooth outer layer of the hair and its lipids to be really nicely kind of tucked in, plumped out, so you have that really nice outer shine. So what to use? Love rosemary. Love rosemary oil, and it's a great smoother, creates stronger hair strands, and it gives it that really nice reflective shine. It's also really, really high antioxidant, and this is really wonderful for the hair at a small amount in a product. Uh, we at Evoke Beauty use organic seed pressed oils. We invest in all cold pressed oils, nothing that's going to be heated or synthetic. And I love black cumin, prickly seed, borage, broccoli seed, rosehip oil. So a lot of these different fruit seed and vegetable oils are really, really, really rich in antioxidants and they're unadulterated. And the next piece is that they really, like I noted, their nutritive properties are really great for the skin and the scalp, but they strengthen that cellular wall, making it plump, hydrating it to reduce either irritation in the scalp and really giving that repair to the natural moisturizing factor in the cuticle for vital shine. Jojoba oil is light as light can be. It's biomimetic, so it's really great for the hair and gives you that nice glow. Apple cider vinegar really helps close that cuticle so the strands are smoother and smoother hair is shinier. So that's a win-win and may give you a little bit of a, a smell, but I actually love apple cider vinegar. So using it as a rinse with a little bit of cold water is a really nice trick. And it also at the same time removes all that buildup from hair products. So what not to use? Such ammonium chloride and other water-soluble ammonium compounds deposit on the cuticle um, to try to make a smoother surface, but there are also strong evidence that they're an allergen and it's suspected to be an environmental toxin as well. So overloaded non-water-soluble silicone coats each strand and it has a low toxicity rich risk, but over time, um, I do find that different types of silicones on the market actually dry out the hair by hovering over the hair, kind of like a rubber right around it. And it actually pulls, when I'm talking about that natural moisturizing factor, pulls the hair's natural moisture out of the hair and helps bind it and to sit on the outer surface of the hair. So over time, that is why when you're using highly silicone products or shampoos or conditioners that your hair actually gets drier. So how do we moisturize and detangle? So a lot of us love wash and go hair, but, you know, the fact is dryness, breakage, that dull hair is commonly experienced due to the modern day gal that wants to look polished, wear hair color, enhance her skin tones, and keep her personality bright. But unfortunately, we're using all of those products that are um, 
creating unhealthy habits that down the road we're tearing our hair back into different ponytails that are pulling on it, creating um, tangling. I have another mini episode exactly on this topic and we talk about, you know, what it looks like to really create a hair routine that isn't is naturally going to keep your hair untangled. And all of these elements today that we're talking about will put health back into the hair where you can get that, you know, style that you want with moisturized hair that's not tangled and gives you that kind of really nice bounce and great effect for your overall look. So again, um, using aloe is a really, really great option for keeping the hair just really, really nice and rich and untangled, along with other proteins, as well as the moisturizing factor with seed oils. Um, and doing a deep conditioner is going to be really critical for untangling the hair. The thing that you don't want to do, then not that, is going to be low-grade vegetable oils. They typically go rancid pretty quickly, and they're not properly structured in a molecular weight that is supposed to be on the hair for a long, extended time. Also, low-quality glycerin, which is often widely used in it as an inexpensive filler and humectant in a lot of natural lines. So let's say you go to Whole Foods and you have the $9.99 shampoos and conditioners. They're filled with glycerin. And it's just over-processed, repeatedly processed, and bleached and deodorized, and it creates this viscous fluid-type molasses texture and it basically coats the hair to pull in the moisture and hover over it leaving the hair just really heavy and feel like you have a lot of buildup over time that's why so taming flyaways and frizz is the next big piece and one of the ingredients that i really love is argan oil it's a great antioxidant treats damaged hair and rejuvenates the ends and kind of folds them down but you want to be really careful because the argon company the argon oils in the world are filled with other silicones so they have like maybe two percent argon oil in them and then it's filled with silicone as noted earlier love organic seed oils I love grapeseed, moringa, sunflower seed oil. Um, they really can help add strength, hydration, and flexibility to the hair and give it that shine. So a lot of key factors you also want to remember about degradating the hair as far as keeping the flyaways away and the frizz is over shampooing, washing your hair, freeing it of all of its natural oils, try to refrain from washing more than every other day or every two days. Skimping on moisturizer and the conditioners, these are going to be vital for your hair to get that flexibility, that smoothness, that bend. And then a lot of us aggressively detangle our hair. If you are getting out of the shower and you're ripping through the hair wet, it gets very snappy. You know, using our uh, repair and protect spray is a really, really great way. You can create a little bit of slip and just kind of lightly brush through the hair with a um, towel that does not strip it or don't, you know, create friction on the hair. Um, that's also a really big tip for aggressively not detangling your hair. And then don't skip the protectants. Use a repair and protect or a heat protectant spray for your locks because styling with hot tools just keeps breaking your hair and we really need to keep that at a minimum or just not wash every day and keep applying blow dryers and then as we know you know inner is really important the nutrient deficiency is you know getting our fatty acids is what's going to be pushing out of our scalp and our skin so we really got to make sure that we're keeping our fatty acid content up so the thing that we don't want to use is going to be high amounts of citric acid, which is an acidifier used in products to keep the pH balance down. And it sounds kind of good, but it's actually kind of deceptive. It is citrus, but it's citric acid. And then others will be overlaid in synthetics that build up on the hair, including pegs, quats, and other synthetics. And those are just abbreviated names that you want to look for. So the last piece is keeping our scalp healthy. Abundant hair growth is a happy scalp. And some interesting facts, our scalp is a little bit busy. It contains over 200 blood vessels, 650 sweat glands, 1,000 nerve endings, and it, of course, is also the mother, 
mother, mother, mother nature to all of our hair and how we are growing efficiently and making sure that all of its little follicles are clean and open to give us an abundance of flowing, beautiful hair. So uh, I could go on for hours about hair growth because I'm fascinated by it and I've seen really incredible turnaround at our salon, but I'm going to I'm going to hold back and I'm going to give you just some facts. So the cause of many scalp issues arises from hormonal imbalances, also dietary zinc deficiencies, fungal infections like candida, and even digestion and constipation issues, which would be detoxification and what I call retoxification. You're unable to eliminate. So the following suggestions, you know, can kind of really, really help with with that. And one would be using a clarifying treatment. It lifts all the impurities off the scalp, you know, the dead skin cells, the hard water, the toxins, the product buildup, and evokes clarifying shampoo treatment helps to basically go in, balance the scalp's biome, and normalize its oil production by chelating the excess off, not stripping it off, and that in which is able to restore the scalp back to a ecosystem better for hair growth, for stronger, shinier, more resilient hair and hair growth. And hormones such as the male hormone DHT is the androgen hormone synthesized in the adrenal glands, also the hair follicles and the prostate. And changes and imbalances in DHT may lead to hair loss by slowing the hair growth cycle. And it actually over time shrinks and clogs the hair follicles. And this is what, you know, this DHT clogging effect trying to get out of the scalp actually shrinks and causes this follicular shrinking, which then the hair falls out and oftentimes clogs up and cannot ever grow back. So the hair clarifying product is really going to help make sure that we can make sure everything is taken off. What you don't want to use is really, really harsh salicylic acids, really, really abrasive sodium lauryl sulfate products, and heavy chemicals. These are all going to be agitating the scalp, adding more inflammation, more agitation, more irritation, and it just simply doesn't help create that ecosystem that we need for really healthy hair growth. So another piece, you can get all your hormones tested. That's also very, very good to see where your baseline is and where your hormones are. Working with a functional medicine practitioner is always good. And then you can also increase your dietary zinc, um, biotin, and all these other pieces will help kind of recalibrate the androgen to DHT conversion. So one really, really, really great um, product that we have with Evoke Beauty that helps this whole piece and frankly is the only regenerative medicine product for the scalp on the market is our Evoke Root Revitalizing Revival Activating Tonic. And it nourishes the scalp and it has a really, really high concentration of clinically studied botanical actives. And it's the only product on the market that I've teamed up with nanocannabinoids, CBD. And it's infused with this really, really beautiful broad spectrum of cannabinoids and terpenes, including CBD, CBG, CBC, and then terpenes of linalool, myrcene, osamine, and beta caryophylline. I really consider this to be kind of the next generation of mitochondrial support for the scalp and hair growth. And that is because the way that we embed this you know, two times more powerful than minoxidil complex that goes in and lengthens the growth phase and slows the fallout phase and keeps the follicle clean and strengthened is then matched up with this really beautiful water that is imprinted with these cannabinoids. And the frequencies are actually imprinted through the formula and they create this really awesome new memory, this vibrational pattern in water molecules associated to the range of these hertz, the frequencies. And it comprises this really incredible entire human chakra balancing system by quickly assisting and aligning the scalp's 
bio, basically governing bioenergy field. And it corrects all of these frequencies and, you know, whether it be inflammation or what have you, and it resonates them back to the system of homeostasis, where our cells can communicate and move from a state of energy conservation and really to protection and to one of growth and healing and further hair development. It's what we all want, right? So I will spare you on all the key ingredients on that, but, you know, pieces to look for in a hair growth product outside of, you know, just ours. Saw palmento and glycoproteins are really great because they're linked proteins and polysaccharides that strengthen the hair. Um, and studies show that it decreases this hormonal balance that we were just talking about with um, DHT. Oleanic acid, uh, tripeptide 1, zinc and glycine. And then again, um, anything with um, green tea extract, we have ECGC in ours, which helps reduce the inflammation state of the scalp, also minimizing the aging of the scalp. So those are some really great tips. Um, also, again, not overwashing the hair and then always getting, you know, a check-in with your functional medicine doctor or doctor just to get your hormones uh, evaluated and keeping your inner nutrition really up in high, high plant, high fat, and a sufficient protein. It's really critical. So those are my top tips. And uh, I hope that it was helpful. You know, there's some kind of key ingredients in there, some kind of top tips on what to do and what not to do. You know, if you go to the EWG and look up the top 10 as far as ingredients that we want to stay out of our skincare, same is true for hair care. But overall with hair, we really want to stay away from the pegs, the quats, these sodium lauryl sulfates, the harsh surfactants, the heavy, heavy silicones that are not water soluble. And I'm not a freak about not having any silicone in your product. Um, you know, I think the industry is really advanced enough that we use a lot of different really light oils combined with different ingredients that give it that really beautiful slip, allow it to cover the hair so it gives it that nice bend and you're not breaking. And, you know, really nourish the hair over time. But when you start to change to a natural brand, you really need to give it its full process time. And I usually tell clients when they come in for a consultation, we're going to start transitioning you out of your old products a little bit at a time. And you just need to trust me that, you know, through this time, and I give it three months, you will see your hair get better. And those women, there's two, way to, two ways to think, ladies. And it is one of hope and action and being active and trusting someone that has your best interest to just doing the same thing that you're doing, thinking that there's no hope and just flying around trying tons of different products and never getting the results that you want. The two ways of thinking are trusting an individual that is a professional and having hope and faith that it'll work. Give it three months. If it doesn't work, move on. Not every product is for everybody. And um, I just have to be honest with you because it just takes a little bit of work on the front end, being consistent, and uh, giving a little bit of love back into those locks. So if you have any questions, please do let me know. And uh, don't forget, eat for today for beautiful hair tomorrow. Make sure that you're nourishing your body, nourishing your soul, finding time for meditation, just loving you. And it will show everywhere else. Irregardless, you are beautiful. I muchly, muchly love you, Awaken Beauty listeners. And until next time, stay sane, get sleep, and bring your sexy back. Hello, Awaken Beauties. Thank you for joining Cassandra today. Were you inspired to bring your sexy back? Please like and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Interested in high quality natural products for your hair, skin, and wellness? Please visit evokebeauty.com. Again, that's evokebeauty.com. E-V-O-Q beauty.com. Until next time, stay sane, get sleep, and bring your sexy back.